Hello, today we are going to go on a hike to find something to eat. Uh, we're going to look for some edibles. Uh, a disclaimer right away, I have no idea what I'm doing. I know some of these plants from living in California my whole life, but uh, you got to be careful what you eat. Make sure you know these are the right plants and uh, don't go, it, it, the old taste a little bit and if you don't get sick doesn't always work. Uh, one of the things, if you, op if you break open plants and it's milky inside, that usually tells you it's a poisonous plant. But this is just for fun to show you what grows out here in California in the wild in the springtime. Tomorrow's April Fool's Day, has nothing to do with this video. So uh, since it's spring, in spring we're looking for uh, early leaf out uh, foliage that's going to be still tender and some flowering things. Uh, those are the kind of edibles we're looking for. Some of these things have bulbs to some of these wild flowers. So you can see the hillside's alive with growth. There's got to be some good, good eating up there. So yeah, springtime we're looking for flowering things. There's a few species I'm looking for. And in the fall we're going to be looking more for like berries and fruits and things like that and seeds. Uh, but uh, so it's, it depends on the season what, what food you're going to look for. So. Let's see what we can find. So one of the plants I'm looking for is called a blue dix. Blue D-I-C-K-S. It's got it's sort of a derogatory name, but uh, this species is often confused with blue dix. They're similar. This is called an eth ethereal spear. Uh, so different plant, really pretty. I love these. These grow on open hillsides. Uh, the only edible part of this plant is uh, there's a it's, a, it's a bulb, but the bulb's six inches down, this ground's hard, so I don't have a good example. I tried to dig one up, so only the root in the bulb is, is edible. Nothing special. So, uh, these I wouldn't normally include in my edibles, unless I had a shovel and I could dig up a bunch of bulbs. But I don't like to necessarily build, dig up bulbs, because you you want them to grow again the, the following year. So. Ethereal spear, onward to more tasty plants. Not edible, but pretty. Uh, just for reference, I'm in Folsom, California, and we're just going on a hike up my local hill to see what we can find. All right, so I found what I'm looking for. These purpley flowers they are a little more purple than the uh, ethereal spear. So there's, they're scattered around here, the blue dicks. You see there's just a single stem and very few leaves. Where the ethereal spear had a whole bunch of leaves, so there's just a single stem. It actually doesn't look like there's any leaves, but there are leaves at the bottom. Now, uh, the Native Americans ate and used all these foods all the time. A lot of what we know about them is just from uh, from uh, the pioneers learned from the Indians on most of these plants. So these, this whole thing's edible. Everything on this plant's edible. Uh, the flower, it's not that tasty. I actually like the stock. Stock, to me, tastes like cucumbers. And they're a good addition to the salad. But the real prize of this plant is that right there. It's called a corm, not a bulb. And when I harvest these, I'm not gonna pick tons of them. I'm gonna leave some of them so they can grow next year. Uh, the natives, Americans, a lot of times harvested these, and by digging up the soil, they would, just like bulbs, they would cause more, more to produce the following year. They'd have like little gardens of these things. And you can dry them, roast them, boil them, or you can just eat them raw. They're actually really good. So, this is the blue dick. So we're gonna harvest a bunch of these for our salad today. Uh, one thing I wanna show you is, they sorta of look like another plant that grows nearby. And let me show you those plants. So you can see some blue dicks growing, growing right here. And again, they have this single grass, a couple of grass-like stalks, but it's mostly, mostly just stalk. And right next to it is growing this plant right here. It kind of looks like corn. Uh, but it could be mistaken for a blue dick. 
the problem with this, this is called Indian soap root. There's a big bulb down below here that you have to dig up about six inches deep. And it's poisonous. It'll kill you if you eat enough of it. What the Native Americans used to do is dig these up. And they'd also do the same thing with the uh, California buckeyes, which grow a lot around here, which have the big brown seed, the buckeye. And they would wrap them in a cloth, pound them to a mulch, and throw them in a, a pool in a stream. And it would stun all the fish. They just float up to the surface and they could just harvest them that way. So if, be careful that you're not harvesting Indian soap root and you're getting the blue dicks. Make sure there's a flower on them and that, that way you'll be sure. And the, the bulb's a lot bigger on these. So be careful what you're eating. All right, so any proper salad is gonna have this stuff in it. This is gonna be the, uh, the lettuce of our salad. You can eat a lot of this, it's, it grows abundantly. It likes to grow in shady places, under oaks, where poison oak likes to grow. So be careful of that. Uh, I prefer not to have flowers, but they're edible too. The whole plant's edible. The leaves are actually delicious. This is miner's lettuce. And I always thought they called it miner's lettuce because the 49ers were always starving when they didn't find any gold. And so they ate this just to, just to survive. That's sort of true. They did eat this to survive. This plant is loaded with vitamin C. So the miners scavenged it and ate it for, uh, to fight off scurvy. There were, uh, wasn't easy to find citrus in the gold mining days. So uh, this, this stuff grows all over the foothills in California, all over the country actually. So miners lettuce. So I'm gonna try and find another spot where they're not all flowered out and that will be my salad. And again, I'm sure the miners found out that this was an edible plant from the Native Americans. So uh, most of these plants are also loaded with vitamin A. So, but this is a really good source of vitamin C and uh, was the basis of many 49er salads. So miner's lettuce, pretty good stuff. I forgot one thing about this plant. Uh, eat it in moderation. It also is a natural laxative. So if you're out in the woods and you need a laxative, this will work if you eat a ton of it. But you know, one bowl of salad, it's fine. But uh, be prepared just in case. All right, what we have here is just some simple white clover. Uh, there's a reason farmers feed this stuff to uh, livestock. Uh, it's, a good, uh, it's a good cover crop and it's edible. Doesn't really taste that good, but we'll throw a few in for our salad just for variety. Uh, clover's kind of an amazing plant. Uh, in that it's a nitrogen fixer. People always try really hard to keep it out of their lawns. It actually has a bacteria on the root and uh, the nitrogen grows on the root. It removes nasty stuff out of the air. And when the plant dies, the roots leaves the nitrogen in the soil. So it's what it's known as a nitrogen fixer. Uh, so it's a great plant. It's also uh, high in protein. So it's a cheap way to get your protein into your diet. So try it, the flowers are edible too. Of course, the bees love the white flowers. That's why a lot of people like to keep it out of their lawns, but uh, it's an edible plant and it's very common. There's a big old bumblebee eating a common weed here called vetch. So these big, these bees are like an inch, an inch wide. I want to piss them off. All right, I had to come to another spot for a better place where I knew my earless less grows. You can come back to your same spots year after year. Look at the size of that. So again, it's under oak trees, poison oak everywhere. There's some toy on over there. I also see some blue dicks running around here, but look what I found. Uh, the lowly dandelion. Look at all those greens. Now a dandelion plant, the whole plant is edible. Uh, there's nothing wrong with eating dandelion. It, it's, a, it's actually quite good. The younger the leaves, the better. Flowers are edible. The roots are edible. Uh, this is an invasive weed, probably came over from Europe. Uh, unlike, this is actually, the miner's lettuce was so well 
loved by the early settlers that the Europeans took this back to Europe and cultivated it there. This grows all over the United States. So uh, these dandelions, which I'm sure came over from Europe, like most, most noxious weeds here, uh, are full of iron. There's, and all these greens is about as much as a glass of milk. And it's also got vitamin A and vitamin C. So just rich in nutrients and they actually taste pretty good. So we're gonna take these home and prepare them. All right, well, sometimes you don't have to travel very far to find edibles. This is trees in my front yard. This is a red bud tree. And uh, they're beautiful at this time of the year. And uh, the flowers are edible. Uh, you just pick the, uh, the flowers when they're young. Uh, they have a citrusy taste to them. Great accent to a, to a salad. The young leaves are also good. Uh, when they're mature, they're not as good, but the leaves are uh, quite edible. Yeah, these are tangy. They got, got a limey flavor to them. Really good. So a nice accent to a salad. Uh, they also grow a pod, a seed pod. When they're young, those are also edible and delicious. Uh, when they're mature, they're not, they're not so good. But uh, uh, this is the Eastern red bud. Uh, our native out here is the Western red bud since I'm in California. Uh, I, I prefer the Eastern. The blooms on the uh, Western are a little more purpley. Great tree too also, but it's not as fully, it uh, doesn't grow as many leaves. This is a prettier tree to me year round and it's got more blossoms to eat too. So on the way home, I found one other plant that's kind of interesting to California. This is wild mustard. And uh, this plant is also completely edible. Interesting story about mustard. Uh, the early settlers planted this, uh, mostly the uh, early missionaries, the Spanish missionaries, when they would had the missions and they had to travel up and down central California, they would use mustard seed as breadcrumbs. They would throw those out off their horses and wagons when they travel up and down the valley. And they could always follow in the springtime, these bloom everywhere. They're all over wine country, all over central California and northern California, all over California. And uh, you see these little, these are the little seed pods. So the seeds, it's not a great edible plant. It is edible, but it's, it's better for, for spicing up things. The flowers are edible, the seeds are edible, and the leaves are edible. But it's, it's a thick leaf. Doesn't taste good. It's more to add to like a, make a dressing, uh, to add a little, a little spice to things. So you don't use a lot of it. Uh, it's got medicinal qualities too. The seeds can be ground up. I don't know if you've heard of a mustard paste. Uh, before we had pharmaceuticals, plants were our pharmaceuticals. And you could make a mustard paste out of uh, the seeds. You make a pulp out of it, grind it up, and put it on a cloth that you could use it to soothe muscles and body aches, things like that. But uh, wild mustard everywhere in California. I'm not gonna put it in my salad today. I just wanted to show you about that. And one other thing about when you're gathering plants, uh, I have dandelions in my front lawn. I don't eat those because we're around too many chemicals in residential areas. I went up and gather all this stuff out in fields. Uh, the other thing you gotta worry about if you're next to a trail, uh, a lot of people walk dogs. You don't want that tangy taste in your salad. So be careful where you're gathering. You don't want to have, make sure there's no chemical use anywhere nearby. And uh, yeah, um, let's, let's uh, prepare what I found and see what it looks like. All right, so I got my greens and then I have all my toppings. Look how pretty that is. I got some red bud, these beautiful corms from the blue dicks, the blue dick flowers, and a little dandelion here. So we'll, uh, I'm using a vinaigrette. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna be good. And then put my little toppings on there. Beautiful salad. Look at that. Now the test. Will I get sick or will I get the runs? I don't think so. Mm.
That is actually very delicious. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah, if you stick with the the tender young leaves, it'll be a lot better. Some of the more mature leaves get a little more bitter, but this is absolutely delicious. So again, be careful what you're gathering. Make sure you know for sure what it is. And if it doesn't taste good, don't eat it. But uh, this is actually delicious. So happy gathering and happy trails. Thanks for watching.